Metro by T-Mobile has the best deal in wireless. Switch to Metro and get two lines for just 80 bucks with Amazon Prime included. All month, every month. Plus, now get two free Samsung Galaxy J7 Star phones. Get the best deal in wireless today. Only at Metro. Plus sales tax and activation fee. $50 plus rate plan required. Not valid for numbers currently on T-Mobile Network or on Metro in past 90 days. Offer subject to change. Offer valid for new Amazon Prime members. Amazon Prime has a $12.99 per month value. Eligible port required. Restrictions apply. See store for details and terms and conditions. Football represents something we are. Something we are. Football is like life. You gotta push. Fantasy football is about proving that you are better than your friends. Hold up. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Face-Off. I'm going to do what's best for the team. Where fantasy meets reality. Pure fantasy football nirvana. And now your host. Let the games begin. Anthony Servino and Michael Hoff. And welcome back to the FF Faceoff, where fantasy meets reality. It is always great to have you with us for an absolutely loaded wide receiver ADP price check edition of the most dynamic fantasy football podcast on the planet, which is now part of the brand new full-time fantasy podcast network. And as always, we have a lot to talk about right now. And before I was rudely interrupted by the great Dr. Harvey Whippleman, I'm coming to you live from the FF Faceoff studio at the beautiful Jersey Shore. It is a little stormy today, but I am your host, Anthony Servino. You can follow me on Twitter at The Real NFL Guru. And don't forget to follow the show at the FF Faceoff as well. You can find us on all of the top social media platforms. If you're joining us right now in video format on YouTube, Facebook Live, Periscope, Twitter, or Twitch, welcome to the big show. And if you're joining us right now in podcast format on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, Amazon Alexa, TuneIn, or Apple Podcasts, thanks for stopping by. But before we get into the action, here is a public service announcement from His Lordship. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. All right, guys, you know the drill. If you like today's episode and subscribe to the channel, please leave us a comment saying that you have subscribed. And once you're done, we will reply back to as many as we can to show our appreciation to you. Like I always like to remind you, we are a cost-free production here at the FF Faceoff. But just because we are a cost-free production, it doesn't mean that a lot of time doesn't go into our efforts. Speaking in terms of preparation, pre-production, post-production, and research. And because we do bring you a cost-free program... All we ask for in return is for some cost-free engagements to help us grow our fan base and our community. These engagements and interactions are things that you can do right now as you're watching the show on YouTube or Twitch or wherever you're watching the show. Things that you can do right now as you're listening in podcast format. Every like Every time somebody subscribes and hits the alert icon so you can be notified anytime that we are live or upload. Anytime you share our content or leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, it not only helps us reach more of you, but all of your engagements and interactions never, ever, ever go unnoticed. We see everything that you do to help us grow, and we appreciate it. We see that each and every week for the past eight weeks, our podcast analytics are booming. And each week, we are breaking our own record. This is amazing. I am truly grateful for everybody who tunes in, for everybody who keeps coming back. Please continue to do so. 
and YouTube is slowly trending in the right direction. I want to see a little bit more action on YouTube, but you can't win them all. Hopefully, uh, this will start to pick up sooner rather than later with the NFL season and fantasy football draft season quickly approaching. And before I forget, if you ever uh, want to skip the public service announcement or jump right to a certain segment of the show, all you have to do is go check out the description for timestamps, which I usually install uh, within an hour after publishing on mobile device, especially YouTube mobile. Uh, these links, these timestamps don't work. That is for desktop only as far as I know. But it doesn't mean that these timestamps aren't useful for anybody, whether you're listening on YouTube or listening in podcast format. All you have to do is check out the timestamp and then open up your video or podcast window and take the take the scroll bar, the, the you know, the play bar, whatever the hell you want to call it, and go to that time, go to that segment, drop it there, and listen right from there. Either way, everybody wins. And that's an order. And now that that's all out of the way, let's get right into the action. Yeah, so we are going to do an ADP price check, talk about some wide receivers that are either going too high or going too low. We already covered quarterbacks, we covered running backs with Jim Day, so be sure to go back into our archives and check them out, and we will conclude this four-part series, of course, with tight end. The first player I want to talk about, I believe he's going a little bit too low, and that's A.J. Green. Seventh pick in the third round, ADP at Fantasy Football Calculator. Um, He hasn't had... The cleanest bill of health. But when A.J. Green plays a full 16 games, 15, 16 games, he is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. He's entering his age 31 season, and he's entering a contract year. Uh, He does want to stay in Cincinnati, but he also wants to get paid. And in order to do so, he's going to have to ball out. And if he wants to make the money that he thinks he can make, he has to play more of like the wide receiver we saw in 2012, 2013, 2014, which he finished as the wide receiver three in 2012, wide receiver four in 2013, 2014 and 13 games, wide receiver 24, Uh, Wide receiver 8 in 2015, wide receiver 34 in 2016, but he only played in 10 games. And last year, he played, but he, um, wide receiver 10. So, uh, a lot of variance in where A.J. Green finishes, but more times than not, if you get 14 to 16 games, you're going to get a top 10 fantasy wide receiver out of A.J. Green. Uh, last year he caught 75 or 2017. I keep saying last year. Um, last year wasn't 2017. One of those days. But the last time we saw AJ Green play a full season or close to it was 2017. Wide receiver 10 caught 75 of 142 targets, 1,078 yards, eight scores, 14.4 yards per catch. Obviously last year, uh, AJ Green and the Bengals were all sorts of banged up. I believe the addition of Zach Taylor, and you've heard me say this on the show repeatedly, the fact that Marvin Lewis is gone and Zach Taylor is now the new head coach is going to inject youth and life into a building that you can make the case from the water boy uh, to the team, even, you know, front office, the fans. It was deflated. Because you know you were going to get a competitive team with Marvin Lewis, but if you did make the playoffs, you usually bottom out. People want to blame Andy Dalton. People are saying, oh, Andy Dalton's job in the line. Ryan Finley, well, on the new show I did, I believe it was the last new show, I told you that 
the beat writers are saying that Ryan Finley looks like garbage. Andy Dalton's a very capable quarterback. He can win when the pieces around him are healthy, and that includes A.J. Green. If that offense is healthy and playing up to their capability, A.J. Green is going to be a top 10 fantasy wide receiver once again in 2019. Another player I want to talk about, Cooper Cup. I believe Cooper Cup is the best wide receiver on his team. However, whether you want to take in consideration he's coming off the injury, whether you want to take in consideration that maybe you think Brandon Cooks is better, that's fine, Robert Woods, that's fine. I believe he's the best on his team, but in the fantasy football world, in the consensus rankings and the ADP, it's usually Cooper Cup who is ranked third on his team. Cooper Cup uh, last year finished as a wide receiver, 51 in eight games, 40 of 55 targets, 566 yards, six touchdowns. In 2017, he finished as the wide receiver, 25 on 62 of 94 targets, 869 yards, five scores. Um, so in eight games, Cooper Cup got you six scores. And in 2017, he got you five for the whole season. Why I love Cooper Cup so much, he's a slot-wide receiver who could stretch the field. They all can't do that. Cooper Cup's a rare breed. Uh, Another reason why I love Cooper Cup is because he is Jared Goff's go-to guy in the red zone. Cooper Cup's red zone uh, target share is unbelievable. In 2017, he was eighth in amongst wide receivers in red zone targets with 23, including six in the end zone and third in red zone catches with 13. Of course, last year, uh, he only played eight games, but still managed to finish 19th. In red zone target share with 12 targets in 8 games, including 5 end zone targets, and, you know, 20th in red zone receptions with 8. Cooper Cooper Cup still finished 19th in red zone target share and 20th in receptions, and he only played in 8 games. Just think about what happens this year if, when he returns at full strength and plays 14 to 16 games. Cooper Cup is one of my breakout players uh, for 2019, and that is, of course, if he can stay on the field. Sammy Watkins, fourth pick in the fifth round. Tyreek Hill, fifth pick in the sixth round. Now, I know Tyreek Hill, the DA, came out and said there are no charges. We're not going to pursue anything because we basically don't have enough, whether that's right or wrong. Uh, here's what we do know about Tyreek Hill. We do know that Tyreek Hill is probably going to play this year. We don't know when. He's on the commissioner's exempt list, but uh, per reports, he could return by training camp. I do expect him to pick up six, eight, or in excess of 10 games from the NFL because you don't need to be charged by the authority to pick up a suspension from the league. I believe Tyreek Hill is kind of going a little bit too high because of the uncertainty. Of course, we know Tyreek Hill is a fringe first-round pick, more likely a second-round pick uh, under normal circumstances, but... Because we don't know whether he's going to get a four-game or a 12-game suspension, or uh, for the whole year, we don't know. The fact that people are risking taking him with the fifth pick in the sixth round, still a little bit of rich, a little too rich for my blood. And then when we talk about Sammy Watkins, Can we trust him despite a potential increased target share due to the uncertainty with Hill? Sammy Watkins has a repeated history of foot injuries. Five games missed in 2018, eight in 2016, not to mention concussions and all, and those other small nicks that he picks up and either misses time in the game or maybe he misses a game. Um, If Tyreek Hill doesn't play at all, There will be 137 vacated targets. 
He'll average 8.6 targets per game. If he misses six games, there will be 51.6 vacated targets. So there's going to be a ton of targets um, to be had if Hill misses time. And like I said, I do believe he will. Sammy Watkins also comes with a 59.4% injury risk percentage for 2019 per sportsinjurypredictor.com. That's in the red. He's a high risk. We know that. But when Sammy Watkins plays, he can be pretty productive. Uh, You know, one of the best stats about Sammy Watkins, he is the number three wide receiver in target separation uh, with 1.91 yards uh, per target. So, I believe Sammy Watkins is going overdrafted, and I believe Tyreek Hill is kind of being overdrafted. And a lot of it is uncertainty and trust. And no, you can't predict injury with Sammy Watkins, but his history isn't favorable. And I know you're saying, well, somebody has to catch footballs. Miko Hardman is now in the mix. You know, there's Travis Kelsey. I don't know how many more targets he can get because he had a boatload last year. But the Chiefs could be one of those teams that might have to spread the ball around a little bit more than they're used to. If there's no Tyreek Hill and Sammy Watkins gets hurt, Miko Hardman could be the player you want to target. Um, He's going with the 12th pick in the 7th round. So you have all of these Chiefs wide receivers spread out in, 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 in about two rounds. And none of them are slam dunk. Because, yeah, no, Nicole Hardman isn't coming with injury risk. No. But he, you know, he's never played wide receiver for more than two seasons. His first year in the NFL, his rookie year in the NFL, is going to be the third time, the third year, the third season in his life that he's going to be lining up as a receiver. Um, the good part of it is that there's untapped potential that Andy Reid can pull out. Uh, he's a speedster, special teams gem, can make uh, plays in the open field. And Andy Reid, if he can get the ball into his hands then I think Nicole Hardman is going to be productive in year one. And considering if you want to take a chance on a Chiefs wide receiver, forget about Sammy Watkins in the fifth. Forget about Tyreek Hill in the sixth. Get McCole Hardman uh, with the 12th pick in the seventh ADP. Maybe you can get him in the eighth. If you're going to roll the dice on uncertainty, at least you know McCole Hardman is going to play 16 games. I mean, he's a he's a rookie, but he doesn't have an injury history, and he doesn't have a suspension hanging over his head. I'd rather take the chance later in the draft and get just about as much uncertainty on my plate with less risk. A player that I believe um, could go a little bit higher. Chris Godwin, fifth pick in the fifth round. Um, People either love Chris Godwin and see the opportunity or they think he's a bust. I happen to love Chris Godwin. Uh, I would probably reach for him a little bit in the fourth round, depending on what was available, or even a little bit earlier in the fifth. Chris Godwin finished as the wide receiver 27 last season. 59 and 95 targets, 842 yards, seven touchdowns, 14.3 yards per catch. The one red flag is he put the ball on the ground four times. Four fumbles, only one loss, but still four fumbles. We know Bruce Arians is going to correct that. Or we hope that he is going to emphasize correcting that. The Buccaneers were the number three team in pass plays last year. They attempted 43.6 passing plays per game. Godwin ran a route 62.1% of the time. Godwin was 32nd in targets with 95, 26th in receiving yards with his 842, 20th in air yards with 628. 
32nd in targets with 95, right? And that was with Mike Evans, Deshaun Jackson, and Adam Humphreys to contend with. With Deshaun Jackson and Adam Humphreys out of the picture, there is 179 vacated targets. They're all not going to go to O.J. Howard and Mike Evans, people. They're all not going there. Brashad Perriman is a little bit banged up. They He seemed to be making a little bit of noise at OTAs, and then he's not on a field reportedly with an injury. There's Justin Watson, but come on, guys. Chris Godwin, he is the player to grab from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'd rather, you know, where Mike Evans is going, where you can get a T.Y. Hill and Amari Cooper, Antonio Brown, maybe a Juju. They could be all on the board with Mike Evans. Go get your Tampa Bay wide receiver stock. Go get your Tampa Bay wide receiver share in the fifth round and go get Chris Godwin. 179 vacated targets. He had 95 last year. Chris Godwin can be well into the triple-digit targets when it's all said and done in 2019. A couple more fun stats. Uh, Godwin, 14th in contested catch rate. 47.8% uh, catches on 23 targets. Uh, 23rd receiver and quarterback rating when targeted. When quarterbacks... Uh, collectively, uh, Winston and Fitzpatrick targeted Chris Godwin last year. They had a 110.9 quarterback rating, uh, 78th in catchable target rate. Only 69 of his 95 were catchable targets. Hopefully, and, you know, Bruce Arians will correct whatever the hell is wrong with Jameis Winston. Because if Chris Godwin, if those catchable targets trend up, he is going to be an extremely productive and efficient wide receiver. Bruce Arians needs to dig into Jameis Winston and correct the deficiencies because this offense is going to be a powerhouse, especially because the defense is going to be terrible. They're going to be giving up production, forcing Arians to pass a ton. And they will. And Chris Godwin is going to be a main beneficiary of that. Geronimo Allison, another player that I love. Eighth pick in the eighth round. Um... Is he too high, or is he just right? Um, at first, I look at it, and it's too high, because there is injury risk. Only played in five games after dealing with groin and hamstring injuries and a concussion last year, but in those five games, he averaged 12.5 fantasy points per game. Uh, caught 20 of 30 targets, 303 yards, two touchdowns, 15.2 yards per catch. I told you the Bucks were the number three team in uh, pass plays per game. Packers are the number two last year. They get they attempted a pass forty three point three plays per game last year. Number two in the NFL. Allison ran a route seventy seven point three percent of the time. When Geronimo Allison is on the field, he is going to be involved in this offense. We know in those reports about Aaron Rodgers and his spat with Mike McCarthy, it said Aaron Rodgers didn't like to target the young guys. As soon as they made a mistake, it was Devontae Adams all over again. Geronimo Allison has been on this team now for a few years. He has a rapport and familiarity with Aaron Rodgers. So if Geronimo Allison can stay on the field... I believe he's going to have a big year. The big if, just like with Sammy Watkins, is the injuries. Eighth pick in the eighth round. He's going just ahead of Christian Kirk, which I don't agree with. I love Christian Kirk, um, especially in Dynasty. I'm all over Christian Kirk. Would I take Allison ahead of Christian Kirk? No, but if Christian Kirk is gone... I would probably take a shot on Allison over the other options who are sitting there. Uh, that include Golden Tate, you know, Sterling Shepard. Don't forget, I know there's no OBJ, but they still have Evan Ingram and Golden Tate. 
And of course, Corey Coleman, who is reportedly getting a ton of work as the number three receiver. I'm certainly taking a shot on Allison over Corey Davis as well. Cortland Sutton, forget about it, James Washington. I don't believe in him. Yeah, so aside from Christian Kirk, I would take a shot on Geronimo Allison over a lot of those guys in the eighth and ninth rounds. My last but not least wide receiver I want to talk about today is Anthony Miller. Third pick in the 12th round is a steal for a player with a ton of upside. Uh, Wasn't extremely busy as a rookie. Only caught 33 of 54 targets for 423 yards, 7 scores. The Bears didn't pass a ton like the Packers and the Bucks, who were 2-3 and three respectively. The Bears were 27th in team pass plays, 31.1 plays, uh, pass plays per game. Miller did run around 60.1% of the time. He was number 11 fantasy points per target, uh, 2.23. At least 9.1 PPR points in 7 games, at least 10.4 PPR points in 5 games. From weeks to 11, Miller had double-digit PPR points in each of those four games, but didn't have another double-digit point outing until week 16, which was his last. Uh, Miller was a rookie. Trubisky had um, issues distributing the football. He is still growing as a passer. Miller is still growing uh, as a player heading into year two. There is room to grow on both parts. Uh, But the uh, good thing is, Miller lined up in the slot 67% of the time. Since Mitchell Trubisky struggles with outside throws at times, Miller and Trey Burton, we'll save that for another show, and I have said that in past shows, could benefit considering they're the middle of the field targets for Mitchell Trubisky. I am going to be all over Anthony Miller in the 12th round. I believe um, he is being overlooked uh, I like that 12th round. There's Devin Funches and Curtis Samuel there. There's a lot of potential upside in the 12th round. Um, but if I'm in a PPR league, I am probably taking Miller over Funches. But if I'm in a standard league, I do love Devin Funches' touchdown upside. But hey, like I said, Miller did manage to score a seven touchdowns on only 33 receptions. I absolutely positively think Anthony Miller could be one of the steals of the fantasy football uh, draft in 2019. That'll do it for today's show. A little bit of a quickie. I, you know, I love doing these overvalued and undervalued uh, player shows for you. I know you enjoy them as well. They are one of our more popular episodes. Tomorrow... I am going to be bringing you, yes, you guessed it, more NFL news. Um, You know, it's been, what, a couple of days, four days in the NFL is a long time, especially this part of the year, um, you know, with injuries in camp. um, The Jets hired a new general manager, and I will be all over that tomorrow. A lot of NFL news to talk about, a lot of NFL news to cover. It's going to be a great show, and like I said, that will be coming to you tomorrow on Tuesday, and I'm sure there will be no- more news between now and then. If you're listening right now on the full-time Fantasy Podcast Network, please do me a favor, search out the FF Faceoff directly and hit the su- and hit the subscribe button because we are always putting out content that doesn't necessarily make it to our network carriers. If you're listening right now in podcast format on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, Amazon Alexa, Google Podcast, and especially you Apple Podcast users or any user of a podcast platform that allows you to leave us a five-star rating and review. This is so, so very important. Please, please, please leave us a five-star rating. Leave us a five-star review telling everyone why you love the show and why we are the best damn fantasy football podcast on the planet where fantasy meets reality. Because the more subscriptions, ratings, and reviews that we get, the more people we can reach... And in the end, we want to help each and every one of you win fantasy football championships, dominate your leagues, and absolutely positively crush the competition. We will maintain the culture of winning we've built here on the FF Faceoff for over 1 
198 episodes and over two years since our inception. We did have two more reviews come in last week. I thank you for that. Hopefully we see more and more and more. My name is Anthony Servino. Follow me on Twitter at the Real NFL Guru. Follow the show at the FF Faceoff. Check us out on the Full Time Fantasy Podcast Network. I will see you tomorrow for a fired up news edition program. Until then, enjoy your Monday night. Embracing your complexities means rejecting anything that can harm who you are, like smoking cigarettes, which can damage nearly every part of your body. Tap the banner to see more. This free life. Freedom to be tobacco free. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans. 30% of Americans who are planning home improvements of $5,000 or more will pay for those renovations with a high interest credit card. That may not be a great idea. A better idea may be to take cash out of your home with a Quicken Loans 30-year fixed rate mortgage. The rate today on our 30-year fixed rate mortgage is 4.375%, APR 4.65%. Call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. Rate subject to change. Pay 2.13% fee to receive this discounted rate. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 33. 30.